Have you ever thought of buying an S1000 for yourself as a first, second, third, fourth bike? Doesn't really matter. In this video, I'm going to give you like three or four tips of what to check for just in case you want to buy one for yourself. Because we have seen what people do to these bikes at rallies, at day jobs, at bike rides and whatnot, okay? So I'm going to give you maybe let's say five tips. Let's see, okay? The first thing you want to check for, right? You obviously want to check for if the bike is ever with that. So if you look over here, you can see the scuffy mark over here. You can see that this bike has fell on the right hand side. That's scuffing over there. That's scuffing over there. And also on the mirrors. If there's any scuffing, I mean that that just shows maybe just grazed a bit of a wall or something. But if it's like really graved in, almost like this here, like that part right there, that that's gonna show that maybe this bone has went down before. A bike that has went down doesn't mean that it's completely crap, but you know, so it's, it's a good indication to you know see what's exactly going on. The second thing that I love doing, okay. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna give you guys one bonus tip at the end. The second thing that I love doing, I like just grabbing on the front brakes, okay? And then just stabbing on the front forks. Just so you can feel if there's any movement, loose neck bearings. Especially once you stab that, then you want to come through and check the front fork seals. If the forks are not leaking, that's a good indication. Okay. Then obviously look at your rotors that there's no funny marks. I mean this is this is normal. This is like normal wear marks, but if you raise your finger, if you just go with your finger on there, you don't want to feel a big dip, okay? Then you want to check things you like your like your brake pads, you want to check when the last time you service. And then obviously you wanna do, you wanna check your tires. Number one, check your tires for any flat spots, check your tires for if you have to replace them, or check when they were actually made. Obviously you guys know that I'm riding that HP2 cuts. Well, I'm riding bad tires. The HP2 series, I'm loving it. In wet, dry, cold, hot weather, believe me, they really stick. And obviously as you can see, I'm running the 255 rear, and obviously the, the front is all the same, 17s. Okay, that's when you wanna check the tires, okay? Then the next thing, you wanna start the motor, okay? Now, number one, when starting the motor, you want to hear if the motor has any funny sounds. You want to, when you start the motor, you want to check if the motor kicks and starts at the same time. And you want to check for leaks. Let me show you the, the, the common spots for leaks on a, well, on a motor or any other motor, okay? Number one, where you put oil. That's obviously where you put in your oil. There's obviously an o-ring there. That should not be leaking, okay? Then you want to check... All these covers over there, just check that there's no oil. You know, that's obviously not oil, that's like, well, residue, but it's not actual oil. And then another part on your stator cover, just run your finger under there, check there's no oil. Sometimes there might be a bit of oil residue here, obviously because of the chain and the loop that actually things off of the chain that could get on the side of the motor. That doesn't mean the motor is leaking, that's just that, okay? And then another thing you want to check is also your chain. Now, a dirty chain is not a problem. Dirty chain can be sorted out, but a rusted chain, if you look at the chain and you like look at it and you see, oh shit, this thing is rusted, that is not a good indication. A rusted chain is a no-no, then that means that you might need to change your chains. Then what you want to do, you'll just run through the sprockets. Obviously you can't see the front sprocket because of the front sprocket cover, but just look at the rear because usually the front sprocket and the rear sprocket will have the same way, unless if you get a stupid person who just change sprockets or they just change chain. So you want to check the teeth, just check the teeth that they still got, they still come like this, then they go like that, then they're flat on top. They're not curved in like that, where they're all sharp. Because if they're sharp, that looks like a crackhead's teeth. No, you do not want that. Okay, you probably look like a person who's probably eating yaupe or something, and you don't want that. So, after doing all that stuff, then I guess you could buy one for yourself, whether as a first, second, third, or even uh, beginners. I don't really recommend beginners buying such a strong bike, but you know, it's, it's possible, it's possible. So, let's go and start the motor, and I'm gonna get on my way. I just wanted to run through those small and yana things for you guys, and let's hit a bit of a cool start. Oh, see? First kick, and it starts. Oh, hi, by the way. Now the only thing that's left for you to do is to ride the motorcycle, run it through all the gears, weave it, accelerate, brake, do whatever that you need to do to it and then if it looks like a good deal, go for it. 